Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. John Kelly, Profiler here, and welcome. Welcome to a, another Viewer's Choice video. And today's video is going to be on the smiley face killer or killings that are going on around the country. You've asked for it. You've commented on it. Uh, so, you know, we want to accommodate. So today, we're going to give you our take. You've asked for what we think about this, so today you're going to get our take on it. And my take on the smiley face killers is that we're finding a lot of young men, uh, physically fit men, who have been found drowned, and near where they've been found drowned, we've found a smiley face killer drawing or painting nearby the scene. So the question is, all around the internet, do we have a gang going on here? Do we have a cult going on here? I mean, what's going on here? Why are we seeing all these young, physically fit men being found drowned in the waterways of the United States? These men seem to not only be physically fit, but a lot of them seem to be very well educated as well. Quite a few college students here. The smiley face is always found nearby. See, what we're looking for here, we're looking for things in common. I mean, do we have a serial killing gang here? Do we have a serial killing cult here? Or do we have a serial killing team here? Seems to be a lot of deaths spread out around the United States. So how do we boil this down? Well, the way to do it is we have to look for commonalities. Where are the commonalities? What can be used to link some of these cases together? Are these just random killings? Are they random accidents? Or do we have a prolific team that's transient or nationwide that are killing these young men? So approximately 30 men were found with GBH in their system. Now, to me, that's a commonality. I got 30 guys, young men, well-built, in good shape, found with alcohol and or GBH in their system in the waterways around the United States, you've got my attention. You've got Stark's attention. We're interested. We want, we're, we're looking at this because this is not the norm. What's behind this? What's causing this? See, this is a commonality. Now, the first thing we want to look at, could it be a gang? Some people say, oh, the gangs. Uh, throughout the United States of smiley face killers, gangs of smiley face serial killers, I might add. I have a hard time with the whole gang uh, explanation. I have a hard time with that because usually when you have gangs doing things over a long period of time, and these murders have been over a long period of time uh, that these men have been found. You know, that, that starts to bother me because with gangs, usually somebody gets arrested for something else and they want to get out of it, so they turn around and rat out some other gang members. So the very fact that gangs operate like this and sooner or later, you know, somebody squeals on somebody, because in a gang, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And the more you expand the gang, the more weaker links you have, and sooner or later something comes to the surface. So I'm, I'm really not into this whole serial killing gang kind of uh, philosophy that's going on out there. Could it be a cult? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, cults are more secretive. Usually they're much more tight-lipped. But then eventually over time, if you've noticed, Somebody comes forward from the cult for whatever reason and gives up the cult and explains why they were doing what they were doing. 
What makes more sense to me than anything is a team of smiley face killers, if that's exactly what's going on. I'd focus on a team. And that can be two or more. I believe probably two. Two people, if in fact they are smiley face serial killers, roaming around the country, because don't forget, serial killers, the vast majority are transient. So they roam, they roam around the country. So these people would be roaming around the country and their victim of choice would be a young man who's physically fit, who maybe they meet and probably meet at a bar somewhere, could slip them some GBH, get into a conversation with them, strike up a rapport, maybe a relationship, get them outside, and then as he passes out, they kill him and throw him in the water. Do what they want with him, kill him and throw him in the water. Okay. Now, that makes more sense to me. A team of two who are really connected to each other than a gang or a cult. But who knows? I don't know. You know, more will be revealed over time. When we look at serial murders, we have to realize that usually about 10% are committed by teams. So we have to play the odds on this as well. And we have to look at Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Tool. How many people they really killed, nobody really knows. But they were together for a long time. They were transient. They traveled right across the country. And I feel they killed a lot of people. Henry bragged and played the cops and everything else, uh, you know, about killing 300 people. And he was going to go out there and he was going to solve cases. And, of course, you know, he recanted pretty much all of his confessions on these cases. But he did kill, you know, 11, 12, maybe 13 people for sure. Otis Tool, you know, pretty much, he's the primary suspect if you will, in the murder of John Walsh's son. So these guys were connected and roaming around the country for years. Okay, so really, how many people did they kill? We don't know. But they were a team. And they didn't squeal on each other. Then we turn around and we see the Hillside Stranglers, another team out in California. You know, we're dealing with Kenny Bianchi and Angela Bono. I mean, here's two guys stuck together like glue, killed a lot of women out in California, tortured them, and then disposed of them on the hillsides in California. Thus the name Hillside uh, Stranglers. Then we have a couple of women who were a team. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. But these two women made up a team of serial killing nurses. We're talking about Gwendolyn Graham and Catherine May Wood out of Michigan. These two women, nurses, killed a lot of patients. All right? So as you can see, there's more of a percentage of it being a team, if in fact at all, of smiley face killers than it being a gang or a cult. This is where the percentages are pointing. But who knows? I mean, more bizarre things certainly happen, and we've seen them in true crime over the years. And then we can't forget up in Canada, we've had, you know, Paul Bernardo and Carol Homol, Homotaka, Homol, Homolka, Homoloka, Homoloka. I'm sorry, it's a hard name for me. Carol Homoloka and Paul Bernardo up in Canada. And they've, you know, killed uh, many women, many young girls as a team. And they tortured them as well. Now, Carol said she was acting under duress of Paul. Paul's in prison for the rest of his life. But Carol is out. She did her stay because she helped the cops in the end with evidence and testifying against Paul. They gave her a shorter sentence 
and she's out on the street now. So we'll see where uh, her life goes. So now this is, you know, some of my thoughts on this serial killer gang, if you will, or smiley face killer gang cult, or serial killer team using smiley face as their signature. I mean, this is a part of their memo. We'll have to see. We don't know where this is going. But I also want to keep you guys aware that we have something like this going on right now over in Manchester, England. We have people over there ending up drowned in the canals. And what's coming out in the various papers is a killer by the name of the Pusher. They say there's a serial killer over there, nobody's identified him yet, by the name of the Pusher. They're calling this serial killer in Manchester, England, the Pusher. So far, there's probably over 30 people who've been found murdered over there or have been found in canals. I can't say all of them were murdered. Some of them, they believe the bodies were just, you know, dumped in there for one reason or another. Some could have been overdoses. Some could have been accidental. You know, people drunk falling in was an accident. But there's a good number of people found dead in those canals without a total explanation so far, and the depth being deemed very suspicious. So anyway, that's our take today on uh, the smiley face uh, killer, and uh, you know, I'll let you guys uh, absorb our information on it and our take on it, and take into consideration if you feel it's a gang, a cult, it could be a team, or if it's just uh, some unfortunate people uh, having some very, very bad luck while uh, under the influence. But when I see 30 men, uh, young men, around the same age, physically fit, um, found with GPH in their system, that gets my attention. Thank you so much for watching today. We always appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. Stay safe out there and make it a great day.